Well, let me just say this, starting off, we are the Treadwells. In case you didn't hear that, Don and Lola, and I'm just here to tell you already, you have poured into our lives. Just sitting back there, we're so glad that we came early to be a part of what you guys are doing, and especially doing for the Lord. I mean, that is just awesome. And I think many of you have been down in the weight room where Ken Manning kind of holds court, and I know many of you have looked back when you walk into that building and you look on the sign, and right above it, he has a scripture in Proverbs, right? And it says what? As iron sharpens iron, so one must sharpen another. And I'm just here to tell you today, even though we might be the elders, if you will, in this room, you guys are sharpening us tonight. I want you to know it works both ways. Just because we may have had a lot more life experiences that we would more than happily share with you, you guys are also sharpening us. And it's just been awesome to listen to that today. So what we'd like to do is simply do three brief things. I think you'll appreciate it. Number one is the first one. We're going to be short, all right, tonight. We're going to try to be as specific as we can and try to be encouraging. And that being said, just to give a little backdrop, and then we'll jump right into the Word of God. Yours truly grew up like many of you, always been an athlete. I can't imagine anything even before that, to be quite honest. And it's just been whatever sport was there, I played it, enjoyed it. And then transition, not because I thought this would be the path I'm on, but God, as we know, works in mysterious ways. And he certainly put me on a plan to, you know, to basically enjoy the life of college athletics from playing it like all of you, even through college, to now coaching it for, just so you know, and I'm telling my age, about 30-some years now. So it's been awesome, just so you know. And like many, probably husband and wives, the best part of my life is certainly this part here, and that's my wife, Lola. And I'm going to let her kind of share a few things that's on her heart to, to share with you tonight. And we'll kind of like you track athletes, we'll be like a baton on a relay. We'll kind of pass back and forth and share a little bit with you as we go. Lola. Um, I'm Lola. Um, I've been a part of athletics for 30 years, and this summer we'll be married 30 years.
can't add anything to that, so I'm going to just move on. <laughs> but what I'd like to do tonight, as, uh, as you know, I, they may have shared with you, I'm not sure if uh, Phil and Julie shared, but our thought tonight is simply we'd like to talk to you about, number one, God's word, and God's armor. God's armor will be our theme. So just to kick it off, because we like, you know, we want to engage with you as we go back and forth. If you would, just stand with me, just for a minute, if you wouldn't mind just standing. And what I'm just simply going to do, I'm going to say a brief declaration over us, and it's just very short. It's four sentences. And I'm going to say the four sentences, and then I'm going to repeat it, and only if you feel comfortable, feel free to join in the second go-round. But I've heard many ministers, trust me, in my plus 50 years of age, and one of them really stood out to me, and he always said this before he shared his message uh, in any setting. And so here's what he simply said. He said, I believe in the Bible, God's holy word. When I read it and respond to it, it will change my life. Those four quick sentences is all he said. But that is amazing impact. And we could unpack that tonight alone by itself, but we got something else for you. So I'm going to say, and if you feel comfortable sharing that with me, feel free to do so. And I'll just start it off. I believe in the Bible. God's holy word. When I read it and respond to it, it will change my life. Let me say a brief prayer for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity just to be in this house of young people on fire for the Lord. Lord, we just are grateful to be in this opportunity. And we simply pray, Lola and I, that the words of our heart, the meditation of our heart would be pleasing in your sight. And we pray that your presence would be here tonight. We thank you for all that you represent to every one of us in this room tonight. In your name we pray, amen. Before you sit down, here's what I'd like you to do with your neighbor. I want, I'd like one of you to say God's armor, and in response to whoever says it, I'd like the other person to say suit up. So it goes like this, God's armor, suit up. All right, try it with your neighbor, then have a seat. <laughs> to do as we go forward as we go forward anytime you hear one of us say God's armor then we like all of you that feel comfortable to simply say suit up because we'll throw that out occasionally as we go God's armor suit up. you guys got it bunch of sharp group here tonight all right here's what I like to do I think it's so important when you talk about the purpose of being here Let's go right to God's word. So I'm going to ask my wife, Lola, to read from Ephesians, which talks about God's armor. So listen to it. Let it penetrate a little bit. And then I'll share a few inspirational things that God has put in my heart to share with you. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Now that's awesome right there. Let me just tell you. Within that, there are about six focal points. I know you probably heard them. Many of you have read the scripture now, I know. But it's amazing, isn't it, that as you read certain things in the scripture, one month, certain things will be revealed to you by... God above as you read it or as you hear from the tremendous leaders you have here, you know, with uh, Phil and Julie. And other times you might read it six months later and a whole nother perspective will set in front of you. So here's what i like to do tonight, very briefly, is touch on those six points that Lola shared from God's word. And I'm going to kind of give you the analogy as best I can. And needless to say, I work with football, but it can apply to all sports when you think about it. The reason football is easy to tie the analogy of physical and then spiritual is simply because football has the most equipment, you know, quite honestly, that they wear. And when you also think about it, 
back in the Roman days of the Roman Empire of the soldiers, right? You know that they, when they went to battle, and that's what we're going to be talking about, right? The spiritual battle that we always are working on. They wore helmets and they had different things of nature similar to football. But even if your sport doesn't have equipment, you still represent MSU. I know with a jersey and some type of bottoms, whether it's shorts, sweats, you name it. So you know what I'm getting at. At some point, you're putting on armor too and you're suiting up. You're just representing MSU to a larger degree. So let's talk about that. The first part of it. We, and I'll kind of work from top to bottom, if you will, is the helmet of salvation. God's armor. <laughs> Try it again. God's armor. <laughs> All right. So that being said, when you think about a helmet, you don't have to have played football. You may have seen it. Some of you may have been at a game. You can understand the significance of the helmet in the physical realm to what? Protect the mind and to protect the face to that degree. Everybody with me? Same with the Roman helmet. Now, when you think about that in the spiritual mindset, one of the things that comes to mind is we've talked about, if you listen to the word there, it said we are in a spiritual battle. And I know many of you know that, but that's real. And that being said, if you think about putting on a spiritual helmet, then what that does is deflect, if you will, the enemy's words, because that's where he's trying to penetrate. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Julie, did you guys say you've already talked about the battlefield of the mind? Not yet? Okay, there's a powerful book written by Joyce Meyer, who my wife, all right, introduced me to that book and because she is an unbelievable reader, and I've become a better person because of her in many ways, and that's just another way, just so you know. That being said, Joyce Meyer's book was The Battlefield of the Mind, and it talks about how, honestly, to a degree, we can tune in or tune out what we choose. But if you think about a spiritual helmet that we put on that God gives us, then what that does, it keeps those negative words that we often you know, hear at times from the enemy from really penetrating. And I'll take it one step further. Inside a helmet, quite often, there's insulation. You know, There's those pads that help it absorb the shock. I think of it spiritually that God puts insulation in our ears where we only hear his voice. You know what I'm saying? So then we can kind of tune up the volume, if you will, of the praises we have inside for what God has done and what he is in our life, and that tunes out that negative noise that we can sometimes hear. Amen? Amen. God's armor. Yeah. All right, let's keep working down. The second one that Lola read in the Word of God is the breastplate of righteousness. Now picture that. We've got the helmet on. Now we're down to the breastplate of righteousness. Sometimes that covers the shoulders, certainly through the breastplate area. And what's that protect? It protects the heart. It protects the heart. So when you think about it, for those of us, and I know there are many here, that have already accepted Christ as our Savior, one of the things he did that's been awesome, and I know we share it, is what? He changed our heart. <coughs> he changed our heart. So when he changed our heart, we want to protect it. Because for many of us, we may have accepted Christ yesterday. Some it may have been 30 years ago. But no matter where we are, we still have a changed heart, and that heart is protected when we say the breastplate of righteousness by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that's a powerful thing because we've got a changed heart, and it gives us authority, if you will, to make good decisions within the heart. And it's kind of like that. I believe there's a song, and don't get where I'm not going to sing at all, but there's a song out there. You guys may have heard it called The Voice of Truth. And I think as it winds down, you know, it talks about of all the voices calling out to me, I will truly listen and believe the voice of truth. So think about that as you go from the helmet to the breastplate of righteousness, and let's just keep working down to the mid area. God's arm. Stood up. All right. Now I want to talk about the belt of truth. The belt of truth. One thought for you tonight when it comes to the belt of truth is simply this the belt of truth is God's knowledge of the situation. So, what I'm simply saying is, what God would like all of us to do is when we come to maybe some crossroads, some challenges, different things that could be struggles, challenges that we go through as student athletes, often we're asking our friends, maybe our family members, maybe someone else, and there's nothing wrong with that. But wouldn't it be even a little bit wiser when especially those real challenging things come in our life for us to maybe just take a knee and ask God, you know what, Lord, what's your viewpoint on the matter? You know, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. What do you have to say about it? And we know what he has to say about it when we've done what? When we've been reading his word. Because when we read his word, then we can stand on his word. 
you know, when the enemy comes against us. So there's so much to it that we just want you to know there's a whole lot of armor that you have, and if you haven't been using it all, suit up, all right? Suit up. All right, finishing out. Stay with me now. We're going to move on down to the feet. Remember she said the gospel of peace upon our feet? So here's what I think when it comes to the feet. From the physical standpoint, all of you know how important your feet are. And what it allows you to do when you put the proper gear on your feet, it allows you to get the job done. If you're basketball, it allows you, you know, do what you need to do and take the ball to the hoop. And if you're any other sport, sometimes you wear cleats. If you're in what, football, hockey, you name it, track, right? Those particular shoes help you get the job done. Am I right? Uh, so that being the case, it's no different spiritually. I like to think of having our feet fitted with the gospel of peace, then now we can do what? We can take the good news of Jesus Christ to others. See how I'm walking here? You know, not that you can't do it on a cell phone, you know what I mean? Not that you can't do it sitting down, but man, it's something to it when you get up and you have to walk and carry the good news of Jesus Christ onto others. And it is amazing as I listen tonight to Phil and Julie to hear that there are many of you that are already set to do some missionary work I want to say as I listen, you know, overseas as well as maybe L.A., I think I heard. How awesome is that? That's just what I'm talking about. Your feet have been fitted with the gospel of peace, and you are ready to march and get the job done. And the other piece of that from the spiritual standpoint, just like the physical, is you've got to be a little bit nimble and uh, have some agility, if you will, right, in your sport. That it's not always just straight ahead. You with me? Sometimes you're moving side to side, etc., and that's the way it works in the spiritual world. We don't always have to run right head on into trouble when we see it coming. Sometimes the good Lord gives us wisdom to sidestep that issue and say, let's go about it this way. You guys know what I'm saying? Then there's other times we need to hunker down in there and get some traction with the cleats or the shoes that we have on spiritually and hold our ground against the enemy. But at the end of the day, we have the ability to move our feet to share the gospel. God's armor. Yeah. All right, you guys are still with me. I'm winding down. Hang on. There's only six. That's four. Next one is what? Shield of faith. The shield of faith. So think about the shield. You see so many different pictures around on the shields because that's what Spartans are. They talk about the shield all the time and the shield arrows of the enemy. So when you think of the shield of faith, you know that's another protective measure that quite honestly can help maybe some of the things coming before it even gets to the other part of armor that we have. The shield of faith. From a spiritual standpoint, when you talk about that, the shield of faith, in our opinion, when you think about what is faith, is believing God's promises before we even see them happen in reality. You guys know that? And I know you know there's many scriptures that talk about without faith, it's impossible to please him. And there's many, many other scriptures that talk about the importance of having faith. So that's a tremendous weapon as far as having faith in Christ as a shield. <coughs> Last but not least... God's arm, yeah. last but not least, is the sword, which is the word of God, the sword. Now, when you think about a sword physically, and, you know, back in, again, in the Roman military days, you think about something very sharp. And in the Bible, it tells us what? That God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. The sharpest thing you can think about, as you sit here tonight, whether it's a razor blade or whatever, God's word is sharper than that. So the point is this, physically it can do some damage, right? The sword, that's an offensive weapon, if you will. Spiritually, it's one of the greatest weapons because Jesus Christ himself gave us an example of how to use that. And one of the early ways was that he showed us is when he was baptized and he came up out of the water and he was led into the wilderness and all of a sudden the enemy came along, right? And challenged him verbally, how did he respond? the word of God, his sword, right? He gave us an example right then. This is how you defeat the enemy. And he didn't make up words. He used words that were already written in the Bible. That was the sword of the spirit. That's the word of God. So I encourage you, as we said earlier, stay in the word. Stay in there. And we can already sense your spirit in here. When we came in here and sat and just listened to the wonderful people talking about the goodness of Christ, stay in that because you have more weapons than you can even imagine when you're serving Christ. So keep those six things. I'm going to repeat them one more time real quick, but Lola's going to share a few things as we wind down here, and then we'll wrap it up. 
Uh, for me, my one of my favorite um, quotes in the spirit, I like to call it Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. With all the moves that we made, some were because we wanted to move, some were because we got fired. But during all those times that we'd have to move and pack up the kids, I would always know that um, Philippians 4.19, that God will meet my needs according to his riches and glory. So I never worried about if we were going to have food, if we were going to get another job. I always knew that God was going to take care of us. And another scripture that I like is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. So whatever issue, whatever the challenge, whatever adversity we would face, we would face it together, but we would face it together with God on our knees. And that's what we taught our children to do. Um, our main goal is to give God glory in everything that we do. And I feel like when you let your mind agree with God's word, with his truth, with his standard, you will be able to access his power. And I like for uh, victory in spiritual warfare, and I like to think of it as like, it's like you're at a football game and you're up 72 to 0. You have the victory is yours for sure because you know the person who is leading the way to the victory when you use God's armor. All right, let's stand. I want to finish with a prayer. Let's stand. I'm going to say those six pieces of armor. I just want you to repeat them after me, and then I'm going to say a quick prayer here for us, with us. And let's go from head to toe. Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Belt of truth. Belt of truth. Gospel of peace. Gospel of peace. On my feet. On my feet. Shield of faith. Shield of faith. And the sword. The sword. Which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this evening with this wonderful group of young people. We pray, Father God, that you would just continue to do a great work that you've already begun in each of them. We are so thankful for those that have a heart that are willing to even go out in your ministry, even here within this campus, but certainly those that are going to go abroad, South Africa, Los Angeles. May you bless them. May you be with them. May you open doors for them and protect them. We are so thankful that we are connected to them, and more importantly, we're thankful that we are all connected to you, the true vine. So God's blessing upon each of your lives. May you each have a blessed rest of this week, and may God cover you during spring break coming soon. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks for this evening. Amen. Amen.